Well, good day and welcome back. Well, I've been typing, and that's a good thing. But as I've been typing, I've been thinking about corrections, typographical errors. And it has me thinking a few thoughts here. First of all, you know, typewritten text is only 120-something years old, 130 years old maybe. But handwriting for millennia of some form or another, whether on papyrus paper, clay tablets, or whatever, handwriting was the main form of writing. And it wasn't really until printing came along that the individual style of a person's hand onto the medium was relegated to the dustbin of history, so to speak, and you have basically mechanically precisely formed letters that are a simulation of handwriting. But we should never forget that writing by hand is the original writing system. So handwriting varies in legibility from person to person. Whereas mechanical printing makes the individual writing style invisible. It removes the individuality from the writing process. Instead, replacing it with some average looking type style that's intended to be kind of a universal replacement for handwriting. But ironically, with typewritten text, there is a kind of unique individuality to the text. And that comes from typographical errors. I'd like to talk about that today. Stay tuned. Well, since I'm the kind of a person that likes to oftentimes overthink subjects, uh, I'm going to overthink this, I think. But I was thinking about typographical errors and I kind of decided I would categorize them. So I have a, a few categories here of typographical errors. See if these are familiar to you and see also if I missed anything. Leave a comment down below if you think I did. So the context here is looking at individual words within a text that's been typed can be an incorrect letter, a word with some letters transposed, in other words, two neighboring letters, two adjoining letters have been transposed, a space between letters, uh, letters piled one atop another or overlapping or in some way the letter spacing is irregular, letters that are misstruck in such a way that they appear either above or below the printing line, Letters that are too faint to be legible, they were struck too lightly. I think this mostly takes care of just about every kind of typographical error. And by that term, I'm speaking not about grammar errors, but strictly typographical. So I think it's interesting that we can organize typographical errors into a finite number of categories. And perhaps each kind of typographical error we can consider as to how we should respond to it. If you are a typist, you've most likely come across the problem of making typographical errors and having to decide, what should I do with them? Does it need to be corrected at all? And if so, how should I go about correcting? What's the best way to do it? Well. Initially thinking about it, it becomes obvious that there's probably no one answer for every application because it depends a lot on what you're doing with that typewritten page. Are you submitting that page to the public, to a government official? I'm just speaking hypothetically here. Is it some official document you're doing? Is it even work-related? I know some people do use typewriters in their work still. So in those kinds of contexts, you probably want to have a pristine looking document so there's no question about your meaning and also the, about the veracity of the document. Oh, there was something covered over and retyped. Did he do it or did someone else do it? So the intent of the document has a lot to do with whether or how you should correct. Uh, but also it is about personal aesthetics. That what do you prefer it to look like? So I was thinking that there's a kind of a cost benefit analysis we can think about with regard to corrections. On the one hand, corrections are an attempt to make the document look more readable, so readability is one issue, and look more presentable. Presentable is more like the aesthetics of how it looks. And I would like to suggest that readability and the aesthetic appearance of the document are two separate issues. 
let's say it's perfectly readable, all the letters are there, but you have little white squares where you had to correct. And it's visible because you're using off-white paper, for instance. Or you're using uh, correction tabs or even liquid correction fluid. So you can make a document readable by correcting it, but it may not be presentable or aesthetically pleasing. It depends again upon what your application for the document is. But I will suggest though, there is a price to be paid for the writer in either event. For instance, if the writer decides not to correct at all, then the price you pay is submitting a document with errors, with typographical errors that have not been addressed. And that can reflect negatively on the author. Conversely, interrupting yourself to make corrections can interrupt the flow state, the writing process, the mental process. And the writer also pays a penalty for doing that. So it's really a cost-benefit analysis, a balancing of penalties, if you think about it in those terms, of, on the one hand, a document replete with errors. On the other hand, making a document without any errors, but it may still look bad because your cover-up method of correction is not invisible. So what I've decided to do here is to look at these different categories of typographical errors and see what are the options, the best options for each kind of error. So we have these categories I've defined uh, in terms of the actual errors themselves, but first some terminology. So I'm using the phrase overtyping. And overtyping in my use is typing over the same place on the line where an error occurred. That could either be typing directly over the errant letters or typing on top of them after they've been covered up. And then the term retyping, I'm using it to mean typing the correct word further down the line. In other words, you might have X'd out the bad word and you retype it right after on the same line, further down the line. Overtyping, retyping, and then there is cover up. Covering up is cover up correction, trying to obscure the correction to make it appear as if it's untainted paper, which is difficult to do unless you're really using the right shade of white paper usually. And then there is striking through. Striking through is not really correcting, it's just Xing out or slashing out whatever symbol you like to use, the errant letter or letters or word. Now I would be remiss if I didn't mention there is another way to address corrections, which is to use an erasing pencil and erase the errant word or letter. But this really only works with caressable or so-called erasable typing paper. And I don't think they make new caressable or erasable typing paper. It's something you have to buy as a legacy product at the, you know used thrift stores or online, for instance. But they still make correction pencils, these erasing pencils. This happens to be an, a Faber-Castell uh, 7058B with the brush. But erasing is an option if you're using the special paper that it works with. But other than that kind of paper, it's really a non-starter because it doesn't work well on most other kinds of paper. So all of these errors I'm defining in terms of looking at individual words. Paragraphs are made of sentences and sentences are made of words. And so I'm looking at individual words as a unit and within those words, what kind of corrections can we apply? I'm not speaking about sentence structure, grammar, those kind of things where the whole sentence needs to be rearranged. I'm just speaking about individual typographical errors here. So the most common type of typographical error is simply an incorrect letter in a word. And one incorrect letter, you have various levels of responses. The lowest level of response is not to correct it at all, just leave it. But as we talked about earlier, there's a penalty to be paid for that strategy, which is people might assume you don't know how to spell or you're careless or you have little regard for the reader. And then over typing the letter, not covering it up, just simply backspace and type the correct letter on top of the incorrect letter. 
That actually can work. That can commonly be a good strategy for individual errors, especially if they're smaller, lowercase, loopy style letters, and you're going to type another one on top of it or a bigger letter on top of it. It can work, and you don't need to go any more than that. And then the next level is covering up the letter with a cover-up strategy and then over-typing on top of that. And again, that depends a lot on the quality of your cover-up methodology, like for instance using correction tape and assuming you're using actual white enough paper that the correction tape looks basically white, like the paper does. The third strategy is even more invasive. It is covering up the entire word and overtyping the entire word. So you could have a word where there is a wrong letter in the middle of the word. You could just try to cover up in the middle of the word and overtype it. But then you have this word with this blotch of a different color and a letter on top of it, and it might be less unsightly just to whoosh, cover up the entire word. It depends on the context, on the color of your paper, on your aesthetic feelings about it again. And then the other type, the higher level of responsiveness to corrections is striking through. So striking through is you use X's or slashes or whatever symbol you like to use on the typewriter, X them out, and then right after that word, give a space and then type the correct word in its place. The advantage of the strike through method is you can do it on any color of paper. You don't have to worry about, oh, I have to have white paper now in order to use this cover-up method, which means I don't get to use my really pretty marbled or some other color of paper you really like. I can't use this on that. With strike-through corrections, you can do it on any color of paper. And the process of doing the strike-through is just more typing. You basically backspace or back up the carriage and just do more typing over the correction and then continue typing the correct word and continue writing. So in some ways, it's less of an interruption to the thought process because it itself is a form of writing. So an incorrect letter, probably you could get away with just over typing the one letter depending on which letter it was, what, what the two letters are. But I would say that generally, if it's the first letter of the word, and especially if that word is the first word of a sentence, so that first letter is a capital letter, then it's going to show up a lot more if you try just over typing. It depends on what the letters are, of course. So the next type of typographical error in category is transposing two adjacent letters, right? They're just backwards. I do this sometimes. I find myself thinking about the word and I get all the correct letters in the word, but a couple of them are out of order because I'm in the process of thinking about the next part of the sentence. I'm getting ahead of myself. And if it's something like two lowercase round shaped letters like A and E, like if it was an EA and you typed AE, you could just probably overtype EA, overtype the correct order. But then both letters, especially if it's a smaller typeface, like a 12 character per inch typeface, they're just going to look like little black, little round blobby circles. And you might not be able to tell individually what they are, but the reader might not have a problem. So the other strategy for transposing letters, of course, is a cover-up correction and overtyping, and that could work depending on the color of your paper, as I said. And then you could just be hardcore about it and say, anytime I have more than one error in a word, I'm going to strike through the word and retype the word. That might end up being less trouble-prone, less time-consuming, less interrupting your th thought process. So the next category is a space in the word. So the problem with the space in the word is if you try to obscure the word with a cover-up method and then overtype it, you have an extra space in there. The, that whole area is too long or too wide. It's one character, at least one character wider than it should be. So the best strategy is really just to strike through the whole word and then continue retype the word afterwards without the space. If you've already gone beyond there and didn't notice this extra space until you've already typed the rest of the line, then the best strategy is probably go ahead and back up and strike through the word and then overtype it in the line just above the word. 
So letters overlapping. This can be a mechanical problem with your typewriter, but it also can be a technique issue in conjunction with a mechanical problem with your typewriter. In other words, certain typewriters are more prone to being sensitive to certain typing styles. We covered a little bit of this in our previous video when I talked about the timing of typing and how if you have a real staccato, irregular typing style, you can induce errors into the machine, whereas a very clockwork-like, smooth, drum-like cadence can have better effects on the reliability of the machine. You could just retype the second letter in its proper position, and then the first incident of that letter looks more like a ghost letter, and it might look okay. Usually, I would do that. Right, Because if you then try covering it up with tape or something, it just makes that whole thing a lot more obvious. Right, So if it's a slight spacing issue, either live with it, don't even do anything, or just type the second character in its proper place. Then we have the letters are printed above or below the writing line. Letters printed below the line are commonly the letter A, which in my experience is because the pinky of your left hand, if you're touch typing, rolls over onto the shift lock as you're striking the A, and especially with segment shift machines where the segment goes down very easily, a slight bump will cause the A to drop as the segment drops as you partially shift it. And then the other problem is a capital letter that is too high. And that is caused by not shifting down all the way against the hard stop of the shift key. In other words, you've only pushed the key down part way and then you struck the capital letter and the capital letter hits way too high because you're really hitting in between the lowercase and uppercase position. Those are usually the two causes of letters being too high or too low, miss hitting the keys. So what can you do about it? You could just overtype the letter. Like if it's a capital letter and you struck it too high, the problem with using a cover-up correction method, you probably won't be able to use correction tabs because you would have to exactly misstrike it again in order to hit it to cover it up. But you could just get away with backspace and hit the shift key and type it normally if it was a capital letter, for instance. In the case of the letter A, when it prints a little low, backspace, you could just overtype it, right? And leave that secondary printing as just a ghost image. And that would probably be less noticeable than trying to cover it up with tape, right? And then there is the problem of letters were simply struck too light and they're too faint. This is an easy problem to fix. Just backspace and strike it again. That's the easiest problem to fix, and that's probably the one kind of what you might call a typographical error that you should address because it's so easy to do properly, to do over properly. Those are the basic categories of typographical errors and your different options on how you should address them. So many uh, veteran typists, people who have been using typewriters for decades, already have their own personal correction methodology figured out, and they don't really have to think about it. It comes second nature to them. But for newcomers to typewriters, this is something you'll want to think about and figure out what is going to be your methodology for doing corrections and dealing with typographical errors. And one method that I really didn't touch on, but is probably the most important method is not making errors in the first place, which is an ideal state. And that's really only comes through concerted practice with touch typing on the same kind of typewriter keyboard over and over again. So becoming a better typist is really top of the list. But when typographical errors do occur and you have to correct them, if you like to type on colored papers, like marbled papers, parchment papers, you enjoy doing that, then Cover-up correction is probably not for you because cover-up corrections become even more unsightly than simply leaving the error there or typing, over-typing it or whatever. So given the unsightly nature of cover-up correction, for the kind of errors that are single letter errors, for instance, letters that are printed above or below the line, or the letter is too faint, or 
simply one incorrect letter in the word, then overtyping the letter, that single letter, is your best strategy. It takes the least amount of time, it takes the least amount of interruption to the writing process, and it looks the least bad. That's really the issue. And then for the other kind of errors, which are, for instance, letters transposed, space between letters, and letters overlapping, striking through the word and retyping it down the line is the best strategy. Or if you've provided enough room with a one and a half line space typewriter, retype it above the word in the space between the lines. So that is going to be your best strategy going forward to balance the needs of not interrupting the writing process, making it time efficient, while at the same time making it look least objectionable to the reader. And also showing the reader that you took the time to recognize the typographical error and address it. And so you have consideration for the reader. So I tend to read a lot of typewriter blogs, and there is one notable blog of Vinnie McFeets. He teaches out in western New Mexico at a branch campus of the University of New Mexico. He is a writer, he's a teacher, and he uses typewriters. And I love his blog because he has a typewritten blog, and he commonly uses strike-through correction method. And it works really well. It doesn't interrupt the reader's flow or perception of the words. Traditionally, for myself, I have not been a strike-through kind of guy. I've always thought I should make an attempt to obscure the error. But going forward now, I think I'm leaning more toward what the data is pointing to. It is four sheets of notes I've typed about it. For many kinds of errors, it's better just to strike out the word and type the correct word after it on the line and not try to mess with this kind of cover-up technology when you want to use some really nice colored papers and it just doesn't work well with it. This is only my one perspective. I'm just one guy and I don't know everything, so I want to hear from you now. Let's have a dialogue. Leave comments down below. Let's talk about how you like to correct or how you like to address typographical errors. And as always, I wish you the very best in your creative pursuits. And as always, stay creative and have yourselves a great day. Bye-bye for now.